Hey everyone, welcome back to homework number two, video number two. Um, I just finished uh, writing a test suite. Yeah. Are they running? A, are they going across the street? Um. Okay, I'll I'll come get him in a sec. Um. Anyways, where was I? Wait. So I have this test suite written, um, and now it's time to implement the parse message method. Let me pull up law.hs as well. <clears throat> okay, so the most important thing to do, um, in my opinion, um, priority number one is pass the tests. The code that you write can be as ugly as you want it to be, or you, you happen to make it, as long as tests are passing um, well, making tests pass is definitely the most important thing. So, with that in mind, um, well, let's just start hacking away. So, um, I basically want to switch on the first, um, character of this string. And since the string is just a list of characters, uh, I can use pattern matching, um, say first char um, rest <clears throat> or you know I'm just gonna stick with X on X's case X of I Okay, so here's basically a high level of what I want to do. It's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to start implementing parse info message. So seems like I can um, simply pass this method the tail of the string. Yes, mother. Here's one. Okay. One's still out front. Okay. Oh, wait, Ma, don't close the door. Okay, but we have the front door open. Oh, well, okay. It'll probably be okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just going to change these into method calls. Okay, and um, this is going to be a relatively simple parsing operation, and it's going to be very error prone. I am obviously not going to do some sort of fancy parser combinator library fanciness um, using Parsec in particular, because this is homework number two of a beginner's Haskell course. So I'm assuming they want you to use super simple things like words and unwords to separate these things into, um, you know, lists of tokens. And for the integers, I can use the simple read function from the prelude, um, which is a partial function, meaning um, it'll throw an error if, it, uh, if you try to read the wrong type. But that's okay. I'm assuming the input's going to be good and sanitized, and I won't have to do any error checking, which is, which is fine for a project of this scope. Um, <clears throat> so that being said, I'm going to, instead of passing just the tail, um, of the log message, which is, you know, going to be like space, some timestamp and some, you know, message words, blah. Um, I'm going to split that into tokens and I'm going to split on white space with a function called words. <clears throat> So this will generate a list, um, like, you know, timestamp foo bar. That's what words does. And as complement unwords will take a list of strings and return one string, each um, element separated by a single space.
Okay. So we know an info message has, or let me just pull up error.log. We know an info message looks like this. Um, an I, which I've already grabbed out, and then basically what I'm dealing with here is a list of tokens where the first string is um, the timestamp as a string. Okay, and the rest is just the message. So I think I'm just going to pattern match on that. <clears throat> and say timestamp on message equals and the data structure I'm dealing here dealing with here is a log message. It takes message type, timestamp string, <clears throat> message type is info, timestamp is read timestamp. And that takes a string and returns a something of type A um, but because of the type signature of log message this second argument is an int so um, that type is inferred and then the remainder of the message remember I have a list of strings here and I want to basically create a single space delimited um, single string I'm just going to call unwords on message. And I'm going to try compiling it. And it's complaining that those two methods are not in scope. So I'm going to define them. That was stupid. Here we go. right x is a character on a string so I need to use single quotes here <clears throat> and it compiles so this works but I don't like it because um, it's not clear why I'm doing a read and an unwords I mean it might be clear to you it's a pretty damn simple function but I'm gonna rename this timestamp stir and this message list <clears throat> or maybe messages and let me save that. Okay, so you might prefer this, and what I would actually do is include. The type, um, the type signatures here. Um, you might prefer the one-liner. I think this is clearer, but this function is so simple that it, it hardly matters. So let's move on to. I guess actually, what I'm going to do is run my log analysis test function because theoretically, this one test should pass. So let's try it out. And I guess it doesn't tell me my successes, but I um, tried three, and I got two errors. Um, so I guess that means zero failed. <laughs> well, zero did fail. So it looks like we can assume that that one test succeeded. <clears throat> Hooray. Okay, let's move on to parse warning message. Um, so without... Well, you know, I'm just going to, here, I'll do this. I'm going to copy and paste all of this code because I noticed earlier that the only difference between a warning, oops, grab the pattern as well. The only difference between a warning message and an info message is the message type, but the syntax is the same. So parsing them is 
they're indistinguishable. And so I'm going to create a new method called parse info or warning, which takes a message type and passes that through to the constructor of log message. And then I don't need parse warning message. And up here, pass info and warning. And of course, change these calls to parse info or warning message. Down there too. Okay, it compiles. We run the tests. Zero failures, two errors, that's what I expected. Oh, that is not, no, that is what I expected, I'm sorry. Because I didn't actually have a test for warning. Um, I suppose I can add one, but I'm only testing error info and blah, blah, blah. So I'm actually going to, I'm just going to add one right now. We ran the tests. So four tried and still two errors and zero failures. So two successes this time. Okay, so oops. Um, let's work on parse. Oh, um, really quick. Um, the unknown should be simple enough. I can just um, do like an otherwise a catch all here. Pass that straight through to unknown. Um, oh, I cannot. Um, no, I'm just going to match anything here. And the string is actually x on x's. OK, and that should be enough. So now I'm only getting one failure. Um, and that is parse error message. So, this one's going to be very similar to my original implementation of parse info. Um, I'm going to unsafely pattern match against both the error code and the timestamp and the rest of everything. Error code stir const onto timestamp stir const onto the rest. In the case this is not clear what's happening here, I'm pattern matching on a list that has to have at least two elements. And if the list is something like one, two, three, four, five, then x cons y cons z that will result in x being one, y gets two, and z gets a list three four five so that's all that's going on um, it's a cheap and simple way to grab the first and second elements of a list um, but it will result in a runtime error if I pass it a list of zero or one element but I'm okay with that for now And similar to before, the error code is an int. I'm just going to try turning this string into an integer. I'll actually show you what happens if um, that fails. One, two, three. One, two, three, foo, exception. So it is a partial function.
Okay, and this compiles. Let's try running a little test suite. And finally, I get four out of four cases tried with zero errors and zero failures. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.